I know, I know, it's two months late, but in the interest of prosperity and the fact that the 1.5 update is so freaking cool, I welcome you back to part three of the showcase. And as usual, I have timestamped it all for your viewing pleasure. Now you may notice some chapters are marked dev, this is for developer commentary, so if you're after a bit more information or a history lesson as it were, then please do check these particular chapters out. Right, let's crack on. To start us off, it's the BDU. Originally only available in Woodland, it is now supplied in olive with gloved and rolled sleeve variants. The thing with these flight suits is that in from like from the beginning of the 1980s and to what mid 90s it was really common for special forces units to use flight suits dyed in other colors from their original color as their combat uniform for CQB operations so I've dug a bit and I found out that the most common colors that I could see on pictures where olive green, gray, and black. As an example, the black ones were used by Delta Force in the Iranian raid in 1981, if I'm not mistaken. The gray ones were used by Navy SEALs, uh, VBSS teams. And the olive one, I've seen pictures of the I don't know if it's a Delta unit or if it's a Green Beret unit that was stationed in Berlin during trainings with these. I think it was a Delta. But yeah, it was a thing and only the bad, badass dudes would be wearing those. Moving on to the mixed fatigues, these are very versatile and should come in handy for a lot of faction and mission builders out there. You need to appreciate these closer up, the stitching details and the 3D modelled zips and belts really bring life to these jackets. Variants include olive jacket with mountain pattern pants, beige jacket, black jacket, olive jacket with jeans, two woodland variants, the M84 pattern jacket, olive jacket with pants and finally mountain pattern jacket. Because this green one that you are using is... It became the standard uniform of the Bundesgrenzschutz after they retired 
uh, the older models from the 50s and 60s. So I could be wrong, but I think they adopted this in the late 70s. I think so, yeah. So yeah, basically a way more friendly looking green uniform for a, in practice, border police force. Then you had a very special version of it for the GSG-9. All right, the first new addition is the, the Brassard Military Police, which was a request from the community. And another addition was a Combat Vest M3 with the police uh, skin, which is just an imprint on the back. Yeah, it's a very simple reskin, but the Dienst Einheit 9, the, the GSG 9 of East Germany had this. Now this vest is from a very cool period when people were still experimenting stuff. And this was one of the first actually dedicated vests made for the purpose of Special Operation Forces. Because before vests like this one came, Special Operations would grab like pilot vests or other uh, hunting equipment and modify those for their specific needs. And this company from the US called American Body Armor saw that and decided to make a dedicated vest that had some kind of modularity. These pockets in the chest, they could be replaced by two, two other pockets, but in here they are in a very traditional and multifunctional layout. And not only in other camels, but also with body armor underneath. Oh, yeah, because like it's not a ballistic vest. Yeah. So that's you have all the options there to fulfill your needs and your personal aesthetic preference. This, you can see Type 18 vest. Type 18? Yeah, that's Ooh. a cool one. That, that is, is interesting. a vest made by a British company called Bristol. And these vests were issued to the German troops in Bosnia in the early 90s. What's this uh, patch on the back? Radio. Ah, of course. Beautiful vest. And it's quite capable, ballistically speaking. Mm -hmm. GSG also used it in a black variant. And also the German police, like the, the latter yep. iteration of the German federal the, police. The state police is specifically, it's not, distinction doesn't matter. But if you're more old school, you have the Type 3 vests, which were also made by Bristol for the GSG. They're a bit simple in appearance. It's just a plated vest with a beautiful leather holster. And for the sake of it's a cool vest, but it could be even cooler. I asked Mond unstoppably to add some pouches to it, so he created the Type 3 A1 vest, which I think is one of the coolest looking vests in GM so far. Now we move on to the head and face wear. The, the BGS and the GSG 9 beret as well, which if you're creative enough, you could say that it's a Iraqi beret. Oh yeah, the ego. True. The ego is very similar. There are some new badgeless variants of berets, perfect for your revolutionary needs. Mm -hmm. And now we have the head wraps, which are obviously supplied in abundance. I'm not going to showcase them all in the interest of time. However, interesting to note is the texturing work done here is done in such a way that the patterns follow the way you would actually wrap the textile. It's a cool little detail. These are the GSG-9 helmets. You know it's what, a modernization of the ones that uh, the World War II paratroopers were using. It's a look. You cannot deny that it's an aesthetic.
there's one that you're going to like, which is the PSH-77, also known as the, the TIG helmet, which is a very nice and very famous helmet for special forces and counter-terrorist forces from the, well, it's from the late 70s, but it had its shine in the 1980s. And you probably have seen a very similar helmet to this being used by Russian troops, known as the Altin or the Maska or many other names. It's because the Soviets copied that design. A woolly cap with a um... woolly cap with a crew headset, which accidentally was posted in the Discord, and people went crazy <laughs> over that. Yeah, yeah, it was a legit yeah. leak. <laughs> so simple. So simple yet makes such a difference. One thing, acid goggles first on the list, <laughs> used by the GSG, and well, you can just look at it. Oh, okay. The funky thing. Then you have the glacier glasses, which are very yeah, stylish. I saw these on my initial look. They're very stylish. What was that vest with the? Uh, was one of the last ones we looked at, uh, and it's with the massive collar. It looked like you could go hiking. That perfect companion. Hang on. Hmm. The Type 18. The Type 18 was it? Yeah. That was it. That is a look. Yeah, that is a look. <laughs> so yeah, you have many camo options for these scarves, including some fashionable options. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Interesting. Yes. Many camels and in different materials as well. Oh, mesh. Yeah. Like mesh. And some Star Spangled Banner stuff going on with this one. <laughs> yes. And the beautiful yeah. new edition. Da -da -dum -dum. Storm Hood. Both with dust glasses for the West. with a red outline for the That's what the Rainbow Six look. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. To finalize, there are two new and night vision goggles as well. And as you pointed it out, they're, they stay on around your neck when not being used, which is how they were used back then. So you've got the frame and it literally just slots on the frame on your face. Yep. Yep, exactly that. You have a version for the west and a version for the east. Then you had the LP7, which was Western as well, as far as I know. Yes, in and... 1970s laser range finder. Ah, laser Star Wars range. actually started to use this as a prop for one of their whatever the things are. With a cap as but, well. For, for the rebels in Hoth. Yeah, but they use the Soviets defenders. stole this one. So if you if you now click down one one item, see how goddamn similar these things are. Yeah. They're still separate models, so I had to model separate things, but they are essentially the same unit yeah you want to try the zpp at night in some urban environment and now press l and don't go into optic mode you see you you oh. actually got a little little white dot back yeah. In the middle of an illuminated area, and that's what the CPP essentially does. It's a calibrated flashlight, and uh, it projects this laser. But it's it's not a laser. It's a light dot inside this illuminated area, and it's essentially the the CQB thing that combine combines a, a laser aiming and flashlight in one thing.
what what this essentially does is for for so if it's really close obviously the the light part of it takes over yeah and it has a max range of 50 meters which for for cqb is more than enough and um what it essentially does is if you're playing on on a, a game mode that is not easy and you don't have your white aiming dot this thing essentially brings it back so you don't need to go into into aiming mode to actually be able to aim which in, in a CQB environment is is uh, worth quite a lot. Also works during the day. Obviously not as as bright as during the night. And uh, yeah, as you can see, depending on how far away the target is or the, the, the wherever it's getting projected, it's either this big full circle or it it splits up into the small circle yeah. and the, the illuminated area. Mm -hmm. That is cool. And this is not made up, this is a real thing. It existed. And it was see. essentially the, the go-to uh, weapon attachment for for counter-terrorist units when they used to do some room clearing. But you'll see this on, on a lot of MP5s especially, uh, when you search for images of either the GSG-9 or SAS uh, from the 80s and 90s.